Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vloggy thing. I am currently out in my living room for, well, the primary reason being that my gaming PC, my primary PC, is ever so slowly dying. Um, it's having severe hard drive issues where it, it, I can't select my boot drive. Like, my primary drive, my system drive, isn't recognized by the BIOS as an actual bootable drive. So I can't set it to automatically boot to that drive. However, if I let it boot into the BIOS, which is its default setting if it can't find a bootable drive, and then hit the boot menu, then it shows me the drive as a bootable drive. So I'm very confused about that. Um... Then I'm having issues with uh, writing to the drives, where I tried to record an episode of Glitchcraft a few days ago, and it failed miserably. It was all janky and jittery, and it's like every other frame was about 10 frames behind. It was really weird. I, I don't understand it, but I had seen it before, back when I had issues with write speeds on a SATA 2 hard drive and I was trying to record too big of a file too much data so I've, I had the problem before and I fixed it by well upgrading to SATA 3 so uh, <laughs> SATA 3 good hard drive not something ancient that uh, I've had for years and years and years um, but I'm also having a small problem with USB at least I think it's a problem with the USB ports where my Vive is no longer recognized on my gaming brig at all. I plug it in, doesn't think it's plugged in. I hear it, I hear it make the noise where it's recognizing that there's new hardware plugged in, but it's not being recognized as a Vive. I've uninstalled, I've reinstalled, I've done this, that, and the other thing. I've done a lots of stuff and it just doesn't work. So I think my motherboard on my gaming rig is ever so slowly dying. Now conveniently, not all that long ago, um, my dad ordered a Vive along with me ordering a Vive. So we both have Vives. And he needed a PC that can run it because he doesn't own a PC. He doesn't own a gaming PC. He's not much of a gamer. So he, he doesn't have a PC that's that powerful, so he asked me to build him one. And I parted something out. It was really nice. It worked fairly well. And it was about $1,500. And I was explaining to him, you know, the PC, what it did, how, what its performance was. Well, what I estimated its performance was, because I had parted it out. Um, he was paying for it. I wasn't paying for it, which is good because I didn't have the money. Um... Not for a whole brand new PC. Not at the time, anyways. Um, yeah, because I was worried about the Vive and the Rift coming out of my bank account, so I didn't have that kind of money at the time. Um, but uh, I was explaining to him what it should do, how long it should last, and what kind of power it should have, and all that fun stuff. And he basically said, pimp my computer. He wanted a computer that was a powerhouse computer that was a very high-end gaming PC. So I went, okay, I can do that. And I spent uh, probably another two or three days planning out the parts, making sure that all of the parts were exactly what they needed to be, because I wanted a PC that could run for weeks on end without having to worry about the blue screen of death. Of course, Windows 10 is installed on it, so all of that planning just kind of goes out the window because Windows 10 is completely inconsistent and quite annoying. But Windows 10 is also the only thing that's compatible with DirectX 12, and DirectX 12 is kind of really useful when it comes to gaming. Well, will be really useful when it comes to gaming. Anyways. Um, He's not using it for anything at the moment because he doesn't have space to properly use the Vive. Yes, I know the Vive has the ability to do standing and sitting experiences, but he really doesn't have the space to do even that. And really, 
yeah, okay, you can have a sitting experience and play racing games, but he's not that kind of a gamer. Which is definitely going to be an interesting thing to figure out what kind of gamer he actually is. But, uh... And the standing experience, even while it's supposed to be a stationary standing experience, isn't really a stationary thing, and you kind of do need a little bit more space. Um, he's actually got less space in his house than I do. He's working on it, we're, we're, we're working on that, but, uh, yeah, so he's not using it for anything, so I'm borrowing it. This is Stormtrooper, as we have dubbed it, because it is very shiny white with black trim. So it looks like the Stormtrooper outfit, so we've dubbed it Stormtrooper, which fits. Though, yeah, anyways, um, it has, it, it's got some power behind it. It's got a six core, 12 thread core i7 processor running at 3.4 gigahertz, I believe. Basically big honking powerful processor with the 40 PCI Express lanes that is needed for dual card SLI. Now, I do have to emphasize that it's 40 PCI Express lanes because you kind of need to do that or you can't do full SLI. One card will run at 16x, one card will run at 8x, and I know it will do that if you only have 20 PCI Express lanes because mine does that. I grabbed the wrong processor. I thought, oh, well, this processor is nice and cheap. Well, it's like $200 less than this the processor I was originally looking at, completely forgetting why I was originally looking at that processor. So, um, yeah, so I got him the correct processor. So his cards are actually running at 16x, both of them. He's got two GTX 980 Ti's. They were the second most powerful GTX 980 Ti's I could buy. The most powerful were out of stock. So, <laughs> improvise. So, I, it's got some serious power behind this bloody thing. Its primary hard drive is a 512 gig solid state drive. Its recording drive for recording video and such is a one terabyte solid state drive, which I just did testing on, just uh, disk write read testing. It maxed out the tests. Like, it. it the test was a nice pretty, it had a needle and everything like that. It buried the damn needle. It was writing so damn fast and reading so damn fast that it buried the bloody needle. Uh, and then the third drive is a two terabyte platter drive for like storage and such. Now the reason the recording drive has such power behind it is because of the capture card that's in it. Now this is a professional capture card, which I believe is like $1,500 just for the card. It has so many inputs that I don't actually recognize all of the inputs. There are some very, very professional inputs in this thing that I just don't know. Um, it does uh, component composite, right? Yes, I think it does composite. Uh, HDMI, um, and yeah, the, the, the really fancy professional stuff that I don't even know the name of, it even has a breakout cable where you plug it into its little proprietary connector on the back and there's like 50 connectors coming out of this cable with XLR. That's the like really high-end professional microphone cables. So yeah, it's got some power behind it. That's why we need the right performance, because we can record at 60 frames per second 4K video. It's got that much power behind it, which is really cool. I really like that. Um, I actually picked up my own capture device in my computer. It can preview, what did it say? I think it can preview 1080p at 60 frames per second, but it can record 1080p at 30 frames per second. Conveniently, I'm only using its preview function. Function. I'm going to let OBS record, so it should record at 60 frames per second, whereas um, 
if I was letting the card do it, like the software that came with the card and letting the card's hardware take over, I'd only be able to record at 30 frames per second. This can do 4K at 60 frames per second. I'm assuming if we let the hardware control it. I don't know how that works. We, I don't think we have anything that can output 4K at 60 frames per second right now. I don't know. I don't, I don't think that thing does display port in. I think the only thing that can output 60 frames per second right now would be another PC, at least that we own. So I, I, I don't know. I'm very confused. And there's a lot of things to be very confused about. However, there is some good news, at least for right now. Because I'm in my living room and because there's so much space out here now that I've cleaned out a bunch of the furniture, all the furniture is now in my dining room, uh, because I have all this space out here and because I have this really honking, powerful computer that I'm borrowing that I would never have enough money, well, okay, I'd have to save up for like a year, but I would, I could eventually have the money, but basically I'm not buying a PC this powerful. Not gonna happen. Um, but because I have all access to all of this right now, I'll be able to do some really interesting stuff when it comes to gaming. Um, I'll be able to do VR, and I'll be able to expand VR in a way that I've been trying to figure out how to do, which is mixed reality recording, where the game itself outputs a background and a foreground, and then you record the player playing it on a green screen, and then you can layer those three together and use chroma keys and such where it places the person inside the game itself. As long as you can get everything aligned properly. Basically, what you have to do yeah, is have a setup something like this, where you have a third uh, Vive controller, which, as I said, my dad has a Vive and he's not using it at the moment, so I have access to the third controller, and you affix a camera to it in something very solid. Um, right now, it's basically just taped there. It's primary temporarily, temporary, um, because this is probably not the camera we're gonna be using if we can actually get going with this, but uh, it, what you gotta do is you go inside and you set a configuration file for how far back up rotated whatever the camera is so that everything aligns perfectly so that there's a third person camera in the game that moves relative to the controllers in the headset the exact same way as the camera moves to the headset and the controller so that everything aligns properly and the layers work properly and it's a screaming pain in the ass um, I'm about 95% of the way there, but as with most everything, that last 5% is the hardest percent. I'm working on it. Um, may need some outside help. Somebody who has experience with this kind of thing. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know if I know anybody like that. So I might just have to poke at it hard enough to actually figure it out. But it's definitely interesting, and it means I'll be able to do a little bit more when it comes to VR. Even if I'm not doing the mixed reality, I'll still be able to do a third-party camera. And I would prefer to do a third-party camera because when you're just recording the headset, yes, you can. But every time I you know, shake my head, the camera moves. And I, don't, I never like the shaky cam. Put that down for a moment. Uh, some, you know, one game actually has actually thought of that and taken that into account. Um, I want to keep saying how to job, but how to job is something else. It is uh, Job Simulator, the 2050, 2015 ar 2050 archives or something like that. I, f I forget the name. Holy shit. But it's got a nice little in-game camera that you can move around in the game and it will show on the screen the perspective of the camera. So I could record the screen with that perspective and play the game. And I think it would actually do really well. But I do like the... I much prefer the idea of having a third... 
you know, a second person holding the camera. And I can imagine coordinating that would actually be a pain in the ass, thinking about it, because you'd have to have a cameraman paying attention to not only the camera, but also the screen to know where to look in the game and not just to always look at the person. Hmm. Interesting. I just thought of this. I do that a lot. When I actually explain things, I start thinking of things that I never thought of before when I was just thinking of it myself. I always think that's interesting. Hmm. Anyways, so yes, uh, some interesting stuff should be coming out here shortly. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to replace the motherboard in my computer here soon. The idea, the plan, is to save up a bit of money, which might take a little bit of time, buy a really, really good motherboard, something that I know is compatible with the new GTX 1080 card. Now, I don't know if I really need anything really special in the motherboard, but I want to do the research to make sure. I know the 1080 cards come with the new Pascal interface or whatever architecture. I don't know. Um, and I want to make sure that the motherboard doesn't need anything special to use that, or if it does, I want to make sure that I get that. So again, I got to do my research on that. But the idea is that I get the new motherboard, then I can get the new video card, and I'm planning on only buying one. I'm not going to get two. I'm not going to SLI these cards uh, because I was looking at benchmark tests between two GTX 980s, basically what I have, and one 1080. The 1080 is sometimes more powerful, sometimes less powerful, depending on what you're doing, than the GTX 980s in SLI. So I really wouldn't be gaining much, but I also wouldn't be losing much if I went with one 1080, but I would be losing any kind of potential conflict when it comes to SLI. I like that idea. Something that I know when I'm playing the game and I'm having a little bit of performance issues, I know it's not because of SLI. So I'll know that the game will be running as powerful as it can be on my setup. And I don't have to worry about SLI settings. I don't have to worry about a game that's not necessarily compatible with SLI that would run better if I turned off SLI. But I don't know about that because I'm not that smart when it comes to that kind of stuff. Anyways, so that's my plan. Uh, new motherboard, uh, GTX 1080. I don't think I'm going to bother par upgrading my processor. It's a 6-core uh, 12 thread GT or uh, Core i7, not as powerful as this one, but still pretty powerful. And if I don't need the 40 PCI Express lanes, there's no point in spending the 500 plus dollars required to buy a new processor. May as well just use my old one. But uh, that's a ranged plan. I'm hoping I can get the new motherboard in time. Uh, before my dad needs his stormtrooper back. Um, it's definitely going to be an interesting thing because my recording drive is two platter drives in RAID 0, so striped, so it's accessing both drives simultaneously. So I can get a little bit of a performance boost, um, and this is probably also why I can't record very well on my PC. It's because... I think the uh, hard drive controller on my motherboard's dying. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Well, because it's a RAID 0, I'm going to have to take everything off of it and off of my storage drive, because it's the same, it's a RAID 0. I'm going to have to back it up somewhere, replace the motherboard, and recreate the arrays. Because that all that information is stored in the motherboard. You can't back it up. So if I replace the motherboard, I would lose all of the data on those drives. Hmm. Definitely some interesting stuff going on there. But anyways, that's the plan. And uh, expect some VR stuff coming up here soon. Expect Glitchcraft to come back because, well, I'm going to have to redo that video. Conveniently, it was... Conveniently, I tend to just do tutorial videos. So it's fairly easy to tear down what I did and redo it. 
if I was a buildy kind of thing, I would just have to walk through and explain what I did and then move on. I don't like doing that. So convenient. Um, though now I forget where I left off. I'm going to have to watch my last episode of Glitchcraft. Anyways, I'm going to wrap up the episode here because I've been rambling on long enough. And I'm going to say to you guys, as always, keep playing the game and have fun. And apparently this SOB is better than 95% of all computers that have taken this test and is lower than a 4K gaming PC. What the shit?